Hey y'all, what's up? It is Coach Kelly Marie and I'm back with another video. Y'all like, dang, she is dressed today. She has on makeup. Wow, she actually cares about us. No, I really mostly make my YouTube videos at home, but I had some time to do some content creation in an actual space. And so I said, you know, let's just take this up a notch. You know how some days you just feel a little bit extra and other days it's just like, as long as the information is good, we Gucci. <laughs> Today we're gonna to be talking about three places that you are losing leads in your funnel. This is so, so important because you think I'm gonna get a sales funnel, I'm gonna pay somebody to make me a sales funnel, or I'm gonna make my own sales funnel, and I'm gonna fill that funnel with leads and everything is gonna be perfect, right, and dandy, and people are gonna buy. But sometimes that does not happen immediately. Sometimes you need a lot more traffic into your funnel, and sometimes you just have a hold in your funnel, and that's what we're talking about today, okay? So I'm gonna give you the three places. Place number one is you do not have a tripwire. If you do not have a tripwire, you are probably losing a lot of money in your funnel, okay? You're probably losing a lot of money in your funnel. A tripwire is a low ticket offer that you offer someone um, right after they join your list. It could be in a couple of different places. So let's talk about that. You could have a tripwire that comes on the thank you page. So if someone goes to your email list, they put in their name and their email to grab your free lead magnet. When they hit submit, they get rerouted to a thank you page that normally says, hey, thanks for signing up, check your email. Or hey, go confirm your subscription. If you have double opt-in turned on, it'll say, hey, go confirm your subscription. You can put your upsell on that page. You could also put your upsell in the first email that someone gets after they make a purchase. So let's say, I'm not after they make a purchase. You can put your tripwire in the first email that comes after someone downloads your lead magnet. So let's say they go put the name and email in, they hit submit, they get to the thank you page. It says, thanks, go check your email for the lead magnet. Then they go to their email, and inside of that email is, hey, here's your lead magnet. Also, while you're here, you might wanna grab this because it goes really, really well with this thing that you just downloaded for free. That's the second place you can put your tripwire. The third place you can put your tripwire is in a follow-up email after they get the lead magnet, okay? And there are different reasons why people do these, these different options, but the third one is, um, once someone puts their name and email in, then they get rerouted to the thank you page. The thank you page says, hey, go join my, I mean, um, go check your email for your freebie. You go check your email for your freebie. You download that out of your email. And then maybe 15 minutes or an hour later, you get a follow up email that says, hey, you did just downloaded such and such. You should probably grab this too because it matches up together. Or you, this is step one that you just downloaded, but you can buy steps two through seven for like $9 or like $20, like something that's a no brainer, right? Now, there are different places, like I said, it's three different places to put it. Where you put it really decides on um, you sometimes it's based off of the coach or whoever is setting up your funnel. I see pros and cons of all of the different places. If you put it on the thank you page, it's a pro because they're likely still there and you have their attention right then. So if it's a really good deal and there's a timer on that page, they might just buy it. But then again, it could be a con because they just downloaded your free thing and now you're already asking them to buy something. So it may make them feel like you're accosting them. Like you're just like asking them to marry you after they just downloaded your lead magnet. I could also see a benefit of putting it in the email where they download the lead magnet because for one, they're a lot more likely to open that email. If you have a funnel, you know that that email is always the email that has the highest open rate percentage. And so that email gets a lot of visibility. It's a good thing to put it in that email. A con could be that they just downloaded your free thing. So they don't even really know if they want to, you know, make that purchase. Also, because they don't have to click that link, if you're offering a time sensitive deal, most of the time, time sensitive deals are are tied to dynamic countdown timers, meaning that when you go to that page, the countdown timer starts, and then when the countdown timer stops, um, then they're not able to get back to that page, but that countdown timer doesn't actually start until they click the link. So if you have a time sensitive deal, like if you're telling someone in the email, you can only grab this thing for 24 hours, and that person does not click that link, then they can click it whenever they want, and their 24 hours starts whenever they click the link. So there's a con there, versus as if it was on the thank you page, then it starts as soon as they hit that thank you page, okay? So pros and cons for there. I could also see it being a benefit coming in a follow-up email that comes maybe 30 minutes or an hour later, 
because that gives the person time to open up that first initial email where they downloaded that thing. And so it gives them time to have somewhat of an experience with your lead magnet so that they know they're ready to make a bigger purchase with you, even though it's like not a huge purchase, they know that they're able to make a bigger purchase with you. But also if they open that first email, which I said is normally the highest open rate percentage is the first following email. When they open that email, what that says to their email service provider is, hey, they actually know this person because they opened the email, they clicked something and they downloaded something. So your sales emails after that are a lot more likely to go straight into that person's inbox versus going in their spam, promotions, trash, whatever, wherever it's going, right? So there are pros and cons to each of them, but you wanna make sure that you're taking the opportunity to get the sale. You need that tripwire, okay? You need a tripwire, it needs to be in the very, very beginning of your funnel or even on the thank you page before the person even goes into your funnel because it helps um, it helps finance your systems, but it also helps you immediately separate the lookers from the buyers and you don't have as much of a long sales cycle. The second place that you may be losing money in your funnel is your segmenting. Specifically, if you are not segmenting your clickers who are not buyers and your clickers who are buyers, you could have a hole in your funnel. Most of your money is gonna happen in the follow-up process. Statistics show that only 3% of sales happen on first contact, meaning if someone downs your, downloads your lead magnet, that's normally their first or second contact with you. They've seen you on social media somewhere, or they've met you in person or whatever, they download your lead magnet. That's their second contact, okay? You're losing out on 97% of your sales if you are not segmenting based off of behavior and if you're not following up, which is actually my number three, I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, but the segmenting comes first. When you put a link in your emails, any type of link, anything that's clickable, a button, whatever, your email is going to register when someone clicks that link or when someone clicks that button. You need to segment, meaning you need to start grouping people together based off of their behaviors with your emails and also their purchasing behaviors on your website or wherever your products are stored, okay? So there are people who are gonna click the link in your emails and click the buttons in your emails and they're not gonna make a purchase. And then there's people who click the links and the buttons in your emails and they do make purchases. You need to know who's who. Because if not, you're losing money in your funnel. Because those people who click and do not buy need to be hit with a follow-up funnel or some type of follow-up email um, just to make sure that they understand the value of what it is that you're offering. Which brings me to my number three, follow-up. Follow-up, follow-up, follow-up. The fortune, y'all see me? The fortune is in the follow-up, okay? The fortune is in the follow-up. If you are not following up, you are leaving so much money on the table. You could probably, if you have, have not followed up with anyone via email from people that have been on your email list, that have clicked and have not made a purchase in the last six months, you could likely double your business. You could double your business in the next 30 days by implementing a strong follow-up strategy via email, via email campaign, right? Because we're just talking about email. But there are so many other ways too. You've probably come in contact with people via text, via in-person event. You gotta start following up, all right? So those are the three places that you are possibly losing money somewhere in your funnel. Make sure you go check those. Like, comment, and subscribe. Read the description box below. I will see y'all in the next video. Bye, y'all.